the previous lectures explain the main characteristics of the power MOSFET, showing the typical performance parameters and their characteristics. As uh, usual in our uh, lectures, we now conclude <coughs> the power MOS topic with the analysis of some casually selected power most that taken, taken from the web. Uh, this is the, the data sheet of a power MOSFET. As you can see, this is a discrete device. The dimensions in this case is more or less one centimeter square. These are small discrete devices. In this case, the, the, the dimension is not that small. We are not talking about those very large devices like the GTOs that are five centimeters in diameter. And channel, enhancement mode, avalanche rating. This is the first parameter that we have seen before. This is yet written in the data sheets. There is a avalanche rating. doesn't mean that it is very strong in avalanche, but at least there is a rating. You know that this device can sustain this amount of energy in, the, in given avalanche conditions. This is the type, the acronym for the device, the uh, part number, voltage, VDS is 400 volts. This is in the high range for the voltages that we can, uh, we can imagine for power MOSFETs. We recall that uh, these devices have uh, an APLA resistance that increases with the more than the square of the rated voltage, and this is more or less the limit. The current is 12.5 ohms. The on state resistance rated is 0.4 ohms, 12.5 uh, amperes, sorry. Then we have the maximum ratings. Continuous raising current, 12.5 amps. In past condition for a given temperature, we can reach 50 amps. The avalanche current that we can uh, sustain, limited by the maximum junction temperature, is 12.5 amps. The avalanche energy, the energy that we can uh, sustain without destroying the device, is 13 millijoules. This is a periodic pulses. In this case, for in this case for a single pulse, and these are the test conditions. As you can see direct current, this is, this is an inductor current, the, the supply voltage and the gate to source, the gate driving resistance at 25 ohms. This is the inductance value and this is the junction temperature. We reach 570 millijoule. The maximum gate to source voltage is plus minus 20 volts because we say, I said before, we, as we said before, there is a, the problem with breakdown of the oxide. The maximum power dissipation is 150 watts. Operating temp temperature, storage temperature, thermal resistance. Kelvin over watt, Kelvin by watt um, lower than 0.83. And this is the term, the ship to ambient junction to ambient thermal resistance. These parameters are, we studied more or less all of them, and these are the, um, the maximum readings. Then we have um, other informations that are uh, the breakdown voltage, 400 volts, minimum, typical, and maximum. Not always we have the same value. This is the minimum. They say, we don't tell you how much is the typical or the maximum. For you, it is important to know that we, in these devices will always sustain 400 volts. The threshold voltage, this, this has quite a large variation. Uh, 2.1 to 4 volts. This just tells us that in order to drive these devices, you cannot imagine to use 6 volts, for example. Because if you have a minimum uh, threshold voltage device, this may be enough. But if you are in this worst case condition, maybe 2 volts of overdrive are not enough. 
This means that you need to drive with 10 volts, 15 volts. It is also nice to see that uh, the gate to SARS voltage, this is a typical problem that we also, you also see in during simulation. Uh, how do you measure the threshold voltage? When the current is different from zero, but you, when you make a measurement, there is always some leakage current flowing somewhere. Then you need to decide. And in this case, they say the measure the gate, to the gate threshold voltage biasing VGS equal to VDS, then we are in the transfer characteristic. And uh, fixing the threshold voltage when the drain current is 1 milliamp. Because the, the real characteristic is, the characteristic is not like we imagine, zero up to the threshold voltage, and then linearly increasing if you put them in, the, if, if you calculate the square, square radix of the current, it will be soft, there, there is the sub-threshold current, and so they measure it at 1 milliamp. And this is the leakage current at 400 volts, that is in the order of the micro, microamps. Leakage current, nano, nano, nanoamps, this is the leakage current to the, to the gate. And this is the on-state resistance. VGS, 10 volts. Drain current, 8 amps. The on-state resistance, that is uh, the voltage divided by the current, is uh, minimum, uh, typical of 0.35 ohms, maximum 0 0.4, 0.4 ohms. Then we have dynamic characteristics. This is the transconductance. Mm, we didn't study this in, in, in many details. But as you can see, the input, output, and reverse capacitances. This is the, the, are the test conditions. Turn on delay time, rise time, delay time during the off fall time. These are transient parameters. Uh, the numbers are also important. Nanoseconds. These devices are most of devices, they are quite fast, they, do, they will switch much faster than one microsecond. You can uh, imagine to switch these devices at 50 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, for example, for low power devices. The switching frequency increase when you use MOSFETs. If, you, if we recall for the lowest devices that we studied, the GTO, the switching frequency were hundreds of hertz. The diode, we always forget that these devices have a diode embedding, a PIN diode. Then we have the diode behavior. There is also a reverse recovery time, because if you bias this in the reverse condition, then you have the reverse recovery. Charge and reverse <laughs> recovery time. Then a number of plots. This is the power dissipation as function of the maximum power dissipation as function of power, the drain current as a function of temperature, the drain as a function of temperature, and the safe operating area. Four hundred volts on state resistance, maximum power. This is one hundred fifty volts probably. Let's see if we can measure the if we can measure the power dissipation at 100 volts at 100 volts the current is uh, below 1.5 amps more or less this is 2 amps this is 1 amp we are around 1.5 amps then it is 150 watts Another point, maybe this point here, we have a voltage of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40 volts. And the current is 1, 2, 3, slightly before 4 amps. 40 volts multiplied by 4 amps, 160 watts, 150 watts. This is the limit, DC limit. Then if the pulses are shorter, 
this limit is increases, the maximum current is uh, 20, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 amps, more or less. The maximum ratings were saying that this device has a maximum pulse current of 50 amp. The thermal transient, the trans, uh, transient thermal impedance, this is also a very well-known plot for us. And these are the IV characteristics. For various VGS, these are very well-known characteristics for us. Uh, these are the various VGS voltages up to 20 volts. Why not showing the pinch of currents here? Because we will never work, work at these currents. The maximum is 50 amps and the static condition is 12.5. This is the maximum current. In the off state, you can work at very high voltages, but in the on state, you will work in this region. And please note also another important aspect. In this region, there is not much difference in the on state resistance if you move from 10 volts and 20 volts on gate to source voltage. These two curves are very, very close here. This is the on state resistance in various conditions as a function of the current. This is the inverse of this one. This dash dot line is the constant power, maximum power distribution line that is a hyperbolic in linear scale, 150 watts. Uh, transfer characteristics VDS, uh, more or less uh, increasing VDS with fixed VGS. No, increasing VGS with fixed VDS. And this is the threshold voltage, more or less. As you can see, this increase here is linear, is not parabolic like we expected. This is the forward transconductance. RDS on as a function of temperature that increases, as we do expect. And this is the threshold voltage that, as a function of temperature, decreases, as we do expect. These are the input, uh, output, and reverse capacitances plotted as a function of the VDS. As usual, we do expect that the reverse char capacitance is the smallest one. The other two are bigger because they include the gate drain capacitance. This is the reverse diode. The forward characteristic of the reverse diode. And these are the parameters of the avalanche energy as a function of the temperature. And this is the gate charge. ED, I drain current fixed to 15 amps. And this is the gate charge. As you can see, there are two curves. One with larger VDS. This is 0.8 VDS max, that is 320 volts. And this is only 80 volts. The difference is in the amount of charge that need to charge and discharge the gate drain capacitance. Uh, it should it, it is important to I think that here I know this is just a charge. This is a function of the charge. This, this is not the time. We have VGS as a function of the charge that you inject into the gate. It is yet integrated, let's say. You don't need to integrate. If, if, we are, if we had time, you need to integrate the current. You need to know the current multiplied by the time to get the charge. <coughs> but this is just a function of the charge. And if you inject 5.5 uh, nanocoulombs of charge into the gate, you reach, uh, sorry, if you inject, uh, let's say, 8 nanocoulombs of charge into the gate, you reach 5.5 volts. Then you need to inject another uh, 40 nanocoulombs of charge to discharge the 
data drain voltage from the from 0.8 VDS to let's say zero, and then you need another I don't know 40 nanocoulombs to reach 12, 12 volts. The breakdown voltage that increases with the temperature, as previously said, this is typical in many cases, and these are the mechanical characteristics. This uh, typical data sheet is, uh, shows that most of the things that we studied, you will actually found them in, the, in, real, in real application.